had loaded phone lines. They were callers from all over the map earlier before Dr. Paul got on. We're going to take four or five calls for him before he leaves by the 50 after. So if you want to talk specifically to him about Dr. Ron Paul, about himself, about his family, about the campaign, about the Campaign for Liberty, any questions dealing with fighting the globalist, 1-800-259-9231, 1-800-259-9231. Specifically, Dr. Paul, the New World Order, the globalist. And your dad's talked about it for decades, got laughed at. Now it's Times of London, covered of Newsweek, New World Order, World Government, Bank of the World will pay our taxes to. If you're elected to the Senate, they are obviously going to approach you. They're going to, uh, you know, certainly you have no skeletons and we'll try to invent them. Uh, are you going to aggressively go after the globalists? Because I believe the best defense is a good offense, not just fighting their programs, but going after them for their crimes. Do you agree with your father that we need criminal investigations of the Federal Reserve? Yes, I think we go after the specifics. And in some ways, the media might light up more. And they have recently lit up thinking that Goldman Sachs and Paulson may have been doing something to enrich themselves. So I think if we can paint it, and expose it as people personally becoming wealthy off of the system and not let them get away with the fact that they say, oh, the Fed's independent and has our best interest at heart. If we can show specifically where individuals are benefiting by government policy that then hurts the rest of us, absolutely, I think we should do that. Well, I saw a video that we have time, we'll play it later. It's put up on Infowars.com for a couple of days of uh, Paulson being questioned by House members and admitting he personally got $200 million off of money he transferred and saying that's not a conflict of interest because a White House ethics office signed off on it. I mean, this is really getting sick. Well, you know, you remember Paulson's first bill for the TARP Act. It was like three paragraphs just saying, appoint me king and let me do whatever I want with the money system. And, um, you know, they shot that down, but then they made it 1,100 pages of obscure legalese, and we got probably just as bad or worse. Now the TARP Act is used for the car bailouts. I even saw the other day that the minority broadcasters are going to try to get money from the TARP Act. Oh, it's, it's just amazing. Uh, they're, they're raising, I saw in New York State, 84 taxes they've passed. Uh, all these other states are passing new taxes. Here in conservative Texas, every month I have new taxing authorities knocking on my door telling me that they're going to come in and assess me. Uh, how much can the public put up with? Uh, I, I saw a report that in Texas, and I've seen in other states, 10% or more of the public have warrants out for unpaid tickets. I mean, are they just going to squeeze us to, like the sheriff of Nottingham? Well, I saw the other day they're going after a woman in Pennsylvania for not paying her cigarette tax. She's been ordering her cigarettes online for a couple of years, and they've put a lien against her house. Not so funny, but, uh, you know, they're aggressive, and they will do it. I think there has to be a breaking point. Taxes eventually get so high that I think there will be a breaking point. I think, for example, on cigarettes, we've probably gotten high enough that people there is going to be, there probably already is, but there will be even a bigger black market probably for cigarettes people will eventually avoid the government taxes completely because the prices will be get, become so high. It's just incredible. Um, if the Senate passes, more of a reason to have you in the U.S. Senate, passes the cap and trade, I was reading the actual bill that they kept 300 pages secret of to after it passed, as you know, Dr. Rand Paul, running for Senate in Kentucky, joining us, or about to announce running for Senate, hopefully. Um, if they were able to get that through, it just gives this executive power, kind of like Paulson saying, make me God. They have gun bills that just say the attorney general can ban any guns he wants or he can put you on a no-fly, no-gun buy list. It seems the federal government is moving to this imperial model. Well, and it's always lost in thousands of pages of legalese. For example, in the Health Care Act, they've named the Health Care Act something like the Free Choice Health Reform Act of 2009. But you know what? The more friendly it sounds in the title, the more ominous it is if you read the nitty-gritty. In that Health Care Act, there's actually uh, part of it says that when you leave your company or change insurance policies, you'll only be able to buy insurance that's approved by the government. And they already have the restrictions in there on what you can sell. And I think things like health savings accounts, which are part of the solution to our problems, will probably not be sold after this health care reform pass. Incredible. I want to take a few final calls. People should certainly visit uh, the website that we have up on screen at PrisonPlanet.com.
dot TV. They should get ready for the money bomb. That is coming up as well. Rand Paul 2010. Dot com rampaul 2010com We've got links up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. But you made a joke during the break that uh, you wouldn't let the Bilderberg Group, if you get elected to the Senate, drag you off to a secret meeting. But if you were there joking that uh, you would certainly wave at me uh, while I was uh, bullhorning from the outside. <laughs> if you that. get elected to the Senate, <laughs> if you get elected to the Senate, uh, what are you going to do when these people approach you? Are you going to blow the whistle on them? Well, see, I have to correct you a little bit on that, Alex. What I said is I wouldn't join the Bilderbergers, you know, for philosophic reasons. But the other reason I wouldn't join them is because I'd be afraid Alex Jones would be outside the meeting with a bullhorn calling me out. So absolutely I wouldn't, but I've, all, I've seen your videos calling a few of them out and interviewing a few of them. And for some reason they get quite testy with you if you ask them questions about it. They, they certainly did. No, you refresh my memory. We were coming into break. The music was already playing and... We were bantering and laughing back and forth, and I meant to say, I hope that you would go to Bilderberg and then come out and expose them. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't know if that would be possible or not, but, yeah, I think we should expose people who are, you know, promoting this globalist agenda for personal gain and for financial gain at the expense of the rest of our country and at the expense of our republic. Well, we're going to go to calls in a moment, but I want to just say this now here, before you run for Senate, before you win or certainly give them one hell of a run, that people need to support you from the start to the middle to the finish and then after because it is quite uh, a load to take running for office and to really try to win, to put your private life in the crosshairs. I know a lot of people that know your family well. I've known your dad for 13 years. Very upright, incredibly hard uh, work ethic, good Christian people interviewed your uncle wayne paul last week and another amazing individual fighting for liberty and freedom but people need to understand they're going to manufacture stuff about you they're going to lie about you they're going to take things out of context out about you and uh, people don't need to ninny they need to just get behind you guys and move forward because we'd be in a lot worse position today if ron paul hadn't have run and educated millions of people about the true nature of the political and economic system and I just want to get your take on this here now. Look at how it did backfire, though, when, in, for the movie Bruno, Sasha Baron Cohen, and I didn't cover this when it first came out until your dad had commented on it, that, you know, they've got an interview going, they say the light breaks, they say, please step in here, and he pulls his pants down and, and, you know, basically tries to block the door. And then the media tried to spin it like Ron Paul, you know, caught in a bad position. And then it came out that they called him in a room, cornered him, and really almost tried to sexually assault him. That was done on purpose. Uh, Sacha Baron Cohen is a globalist. And I, it's not just funny, though it's the number one movie right now. I just want to bring that up and warn people that they mean business and are going to try dirty tricks. But that did end up blowing up in their face. But can you comment on that and then comment overall on gutting up to do this, but also that people need to be ready for all sorts of chicanery? Well, the thing about that movie that really sort of makes me mad is that my dad gives so much of his time. He is an upright man. He's been married for 50 years. He doesn't need and he doesn't deserve that kind of behavior by somebody that really is almost like an assault. I mean, it really, I think, is so uh, so beneath what we should have to deal with in public discourse. The other thing is, is while I'm not much for lawsuits, there was a woman that he shocked and did something shocking to the actor did. Uh, at like a PTA meeting or at a church uh, social, and she fell and hit her head and had a bleed and a stroke, and she is suing him. And I say, Godspeed, I hope she gets a bunch of money out of that guy because it really is unfair to misrepresent yourself. And Well, it's to, also... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I just think it's unfair to misrepresent people and to come in and do that. And it's this whole shocking thing, but it's, it's kind of what's made our country go downhill, I think, culturally and as a people that we have such trash on TV, such trash in the movies. And, you know, the more we get it of it, it inures us. And it makes us think that, you know, that stuff is okay because it's all over TV and the movies. And so, there, you know, the, the moral standard gets lower and lower. Well, it's also very dangerous. Uh, we're showing some of the video here where they're doing the interview and the light breaks and they ask him to step into a room and then 
that's what my wife called it. My wife as a woman got very upset saying if that had been a woman, he'd have probably gone to jail. I mean, getting somebody in a room and then sexually advancing on them and your father basically shoves him out of the way and screams at him and runs out of the room.